One, two, three, four, get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling great. Nine, gonna shine, life is good. I'm doing five, ten, gonna do it right and do it again, yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got to show, to give, let out, I want to sing and shout. Take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening. And together make a beautiful life. And if you wanna see, then come along with me, that's right. And if you wanna Hello and welcome to Experience Michiana. I'm Irish Dave and I'm here in downtown South Bend and we have a really great show for you this week. We're gonna check in with the Potawatomi Zoo and get an update on their giraffes. I'm looking forward to seeing about that. We've also got For the Love of Art Fair that is coming to the Century Center, but I'm here at the library. I'm actually here at the Community Learning Center to find out more about what's going on here. And I think you're gonna be surprised and really intrigued and impressed by the facilities that they have here. So let's go inside and check it out. I am here in downtown South Bend in the Community Learning Center. It's an amazing new addition to downtown South Bend and you're invited to come along and use it. I'm here with Marissa, who is the communications manager. How are you doing? Great, great. Thank you so much for coming. You must be so proud of this. Yes. It, it really is beautiful. Yes, this is a 38,000 square feet facility that we built just for the community. So we really want to encourage the community to stop on by. One place is the coffee shop just right here. It's going to yeah. open in mid-February. Yeah. We'll have pastries, coffee, a bunch of different drinks all to go. We would love for people to stop by, have meetings in here, mm -hmm. you know, maybe meet with a friend um, or do, do some remote work here mm -hmm. at the coffee shop or in one of the tables. We'll have some es espresso, pastries, uh, different coffees. So yeah, this opens um, in about two weeks from now. Yeah, it's, and again, this is a good hangout spot, and I know that you've got lots of other rooms, so who can use it? I mean, could I as an individual just come in? I know I can sit here, but is there rooms that I can use as an individual as well? Yes, or? yes, yes, absolutely. So anyone can just walk in off the street, mm -hmm. um, order a coffee or some pastries, sit down at one of the tables over there or here. You can work, you know, work remotely. Um, and we'd also like to show you some more spaces that the community can use. Absolutely. And I know that, uh, for example, for nonprofits, I love nonprofits. I work with a lot of nonprofits. Yes. Uh, this is also a great space for them. Tell me a little bit about the arrangement for people that might be watching that are part of nonprofits. Yes. So this space was really built, um, like I said, for the community. So we really want businesses and nonprofits mm -hmm. to reserve these spaces. Um, so nonprofits and businesses can have conferences, meetings, special events um, throughout the year. Mm -hmm. They can contact Denise to book those spaces um, and the spaces for nonprofits are free. Yeah, which is really wonderful. They do such a great job for our community. So it's great that the Community Learning Center is open to them. I know this is also a beautiful ballroom as well. So yes. is that open? Like yes. now I just got married the once and that's all I ever want to get married. But yes. if somebody's, is it open for things like that for a wedding? Absolutely, yes. yes. Yes, we've, we've already booked several weddings. So um, yeah, weddings can use the courtyard, the ballroom, mm -hmm. it's a couple different spaces. So there's a lot of flexibility here. And I know the courtyard is covered in snow right now uh, with the weather that we're getting, but uh, in the summer and in the spring and nicer weather, there's also gonna be a great outdoor space yes, there as well, Yes, right? it is so beautiful with pergolas and, um, and the, the plants that are there. It's lovely, so lovely. So what is the name of the meeting room where, uh, with a huge glass window in it facing out into downtown South Bend? Yeah, that, that is the Buter Kernan Hall. Okay. And so there's some board meetings in there. Mm -hmm. The Community uh, Foundation just had their boarding meeting in there. We have the library board meeting in there. It's available for the community to wow. use. Yeah, it's a beautiful space, a lot of natural light. Um, there's some baby showers that have booked that space. So yeah, we would encourage anyone to use that beautiful space with, with such beautiful natural light. Well, you know, it is funded by the city, which is funded by the people, so it's great that the people get to use it because yes. it is theirs. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, there's so many spaces from classrooms to the ballroom, the auditorium. Um, so this Saturday, February 5th, we have special events happening um, in the auditorium that are free. Mm -hmm. So while Science Alive has been canceled, mm -hmm. the 
stage shows that were planned for Science Alive are still on. And so from 9.15 to 4 this Saturday, there are science talks and science presentations mm -hmm. that are free and open to the public in the auditorium. So people can go to our website and see what those shows mm -hmm. are, or they can also just drop by on Saturday. And that's amazing for this Saturday. And if people, obviously, if they want to come along to that, but for anyone watching who does want to book a room or book a space, how do they even do that? Like, is there a website that they can book yes. it, or do they have yes. to call? Or? Yeah, they can just go to the library's website, okay. sjcpl.org, mm -hmm. um, and then you'll click on visit at the top, and then you'll see book a room. You'll see all, photos of all the different spaces, mm -hmm. information, things like that. Everything's available on the website. So we're here now in the ballroom where people, of course, can get married or all different things going on. But there is actually a community service that is very appropriate for this time of the year that's going to be happening. Tell us about that. Yes. So our free tax assistance mm -hmm. happens out of this space, the ballroom. So people can sign up for free tax assistance from now until when taxes are due in mid-April. So they can actually meet with professionals here that will help them yes. through the process? Yes, there are volunteer staff and mm -hmm. volunteers from Notre Dame, St. Mary's, and yes. Goodwill that help people one-on-one -on -one with their taxes. I love that because I know for some people tax season is exciting. I find it, I dread it every year. I don't know mm -hmm. why, I just find it a little bit overwhelming even myself to have to do it. So for the community to have this service, it's a really good thing for them too. Yes, yes. They can just go to our website, sign up and register for a session and bring their paperwork and, uh, and a, a certified tax volunteer will file their taxes for them. I cannot recommend this place enough, whether it's the library or whether it's here in the Community Learning Center. I think it's an amazing addition to downtown South Bend and I think people need to use it and need to get rid of any barriers that might be in their way to be able to succeed all and, and, and achieve all the things they want to achieve. So thanks for what you're doing and I really hope that you do use this because it is your facility, so come use it. It is time for the love of art and for the love of art fair. It is finally coming back and I am so excited here with Shireen who is the producer for this art event. This is one of my favorites in the Michigan community. I just love coming to it. Well, I'm glad that we're back. It's been a, it's been a break for two years. Yes, it's so exciting to be back. How many years have you been doing this? This will be our eighth year for the love of art fair. That's amazing. And this year's event is a two day event. Yes, two days like always. Um, we have 43 artists and from a variety of traditional art to contemporary art okay. and um, you know different price ranges, different arrays of art. Sure. So you'll find things that you can hang on your wall, you can wearable art, uh -huh. jewelry of course. Of course. <laughs> and even um, there'll be you know, functional art as well. Okay, okay. And I know one of my artists, I have a couple pieces in our home from things I've picked up over the years too. I think her name is Margaret, who does the rock paintings. Yes, Martha. Martha, thank she you. She will be returning. Awesome, yes. yay, we love her stuff too. So talk about some of the different artists that are gonna be there. I know you have some that are gonna be featured um, that you wanted to talk about too. Well, we have, um, one of my favorites is Ed Bratton. He comes all the way up from Arkansas. And he, do you remember the large trees that were done in copper? Yes. So he's back. Oh, good, great, awesome. We also have some new artists. We have this wood turner that takes and turns wood down to as thin as you can, I mean, just to a min millimeter. And then he sandblasts through it. So you see this beautiful glow of light. Oh, wow. You just have to come and see it. It's amazing. I've never seen anything like it. That's awesome. I'm so glad that you have some of your the regulars who everybody loves in the community, but also you have a lot of new artists coming in too. Yeah. Um, like I said, they're representing a regional area. So we okay. have Kentucky and Missouri, Wisconsin, Illinois, all of Indiana. And local artists and Michigan, too. Yeah, and local <laughs> artists. So, you know, so your favorite local artists will be there as well. And I think what's so unique about this particular event is that, you know, the, the background of each of these artists, it really varies. It's a wide range. That's correct. So there are artists that obviously went to prestigious art schools. We have artists that have traveled and studied abroad. And then artists have turned a hobby into a profession. Absolutely, and this is one of the ones that I wanted to, you to show too. This is a really cool thing, and, and this is really an honor or in memory. Yeah, um, our um, so our honorary artist is Brabant Lenting, John Lenting, and he passed away December 26th of cancer, mm -hmm. but his work will still be honored here at For Love Art Fair. That's wonderful. And so every day, 
um, he would get up at 4.45 in the morning <laughs> and he would do a flash painting. Okay. And the flash painting was usually on an art magazine. So this is art in America. Okay. And he would flash paint. That's beautiful. And then um, he would scan it, actually when it was wet, uh -huh. and he would scan it and then he'd put it out there to Facebook to let everyone know, here's my flash painting. Uh -huh. So when he ended up getting ill, everyone really missed out mm. on seeing those. Everyone looked forward to seeing those flash paintings. Yeah. But these will be available, and some of his large pieces will be available That's at fantastic. the show as well. That's fantastic. And now, how can people get tickets for the show? Well, um, it is either cash or you come in credit card Venmo. Okay. Um, so we don't have tickets online. Okay, so they just buy them there. Just at buy the them event. right there, yeah. Perfect. Okay. So we're accepting, you know, like credit card and Venmo and, and cash. Okay, and when is the event taking place? In March, right? It's March 5th and 6th, and we have music both days. Ooh, tell us about the music, because that's, you know, that's another art form, too. Well, you know, it's not music to get up and dance. It's more like <laughs> relaxing music. You might not get up and dance. I might. <laughs> it's really cute to see little girls I love just that. dancing uh -huh. up in the, in the crowd there. But um, so we start out with Jake Michael, which is an original songwriter from South Bend. And we have Marco Valero, who plays a Spanish guitar. Oh my oh, gosh. Instrumental. Amazing. And he plays a little bit of jazz as okay. well. And then we finish off Saturday with some people's favorite in the area, Denny Snyder, Southside oh Denny, will be returning to South Bend for the Love Art Fair. Then on Sunday, we have. Uh, Mike D. Hayes, he plays the electric cello. Oh, I love the cello. I mean, he turns, <laughs> he turns, like the beat. He'll play the Beatles on the cello. Oh, I mean, awesome! Or, or the Who <laughs> on the cello, uh -huh. and turns it into an amazing music. And then we finish off with Fred Story's band, the St Sand Rabbits, okay. and so they play a mix of '60s and '70s folk music. Okay, so you have the, the visual entertainment and the, the sounds and everything that goes along with it. So it really is a, you know, a very unique event to our community. What would you say is really makes it so unique? We're indoors, first of all. Ah, that's so, a good one. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about the, the wind or the rain, mm -hmm. and that's a big plus for these artists, because sure. they struggle with the summer shows, fearing that, oh gosh, am I going to lose my tent or lose my work? Oh, so you're yeah. inside where you're protected, uh -huh. and it just also, the Century Center is a really nice place. It gives an ambiance. They have like the carpet mm -hmm. and the and chandeliers. The yeah, and it's just a beautiful, experience. It is, and I think we're actually going to get to meet one of the artists now too, right? Right, you get to meet Diane Reeder Dorn, and she participated two years ago okay. in our show, and so we're looking at her work right now. Oh, this is beautiful. And um, so yeah, so you're going to get a chance to meet her real soon. Awesome, well hey, let's go see if we can find her. Okay. Well, I'm excited to be down here in the studio with one of the artists that is going to be showcased at For the Love of Art Fair, Diane Reeder Jorn. Thank you so much for having us. This is amazing art pieces, and I, I love how you've kind of brought them together. Tell us about what you have here on display for us today. Uh, this grouping is named Tamaku, and Tamaku is simply the name of the glaze that I used on this uh, stoneware. Okay. And I created this, um, my paintings uh, oftentimes have sort of a language mm. that they interpreted. That they speak. Yeah. Yes. And for instance, and so I wanted to take this even further by doing a watercolor with the same name. Oh, that's beautiful. And so my uh, attempt here is kind of to give a 3D effect. Uh -huh. So I have a dark background that matches the uh, Tamaku. Yeah. And then I have a light grid. And then my language is free-flowing watercolor okay. that suggests in my series of chaos and order. Okay. I like a structured life. Uh -huh. I like everything to be <laughs> in order. Which is and, interesting for an artist. <laughs> and to go very smoothly, uh -huh. yes. And then things happen. Uh -huh. And sometimes it's very good, joyous, uh -huh. and sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. But it's a surprise. Uh -huh. And so my work uh, reflects that idea of order and then flowing uh -huh. 
work with surprise. And is that kind of how you know you start a project or a piece? Yes, I I usually when I'm working on my watercolors or my acrylics is that I will start off with a grid of okay. some sort. Okay. Uh, vertical, horizontal lines okay. most generally. And then I pick a slot and just See let, where it goes. <laughs> see where it goes with my brush, uh -huh. choosing the colors. Many times my uh, paintings are fairly monochromatic. Okay. I may have two different colors, but mixing them creates new sure. views yeah. and venues. And so it just flows. Uh -huh. and, and you do use a variety of mediums. Yes, uh, acrylics. I use uh, encaustic, which is painting with beeswax. Which I saw some of those. Those are amazing. Thank you. What is that like? I mean, how is that different from some of the other arts? Well, I, I do it on a wood substrate. Okay. Because it needs to be porous. Mm. And so I layer uh, wax, beeswax, that's molten. It's melted and apply it with a brush and then I have to e heat set every layer so that it attaches to the layer below it. Okay. Now you're gonna have some of this on display at For the Love of Art Fair that people can purchase. What kinds of things are you planning to have there? I will have some of everything. Okay. One thing unique about my work is other than my watercolors and I use a full sheet of paper okay. and I don't put them underneath a mat Oh, I like above it. I can see that on the edging. I paint to the edge because I like the decal edge to okay. show. I feel like that's always a question when you come down to painting. Do you paint over the edge or do you not? <laughs> I take it to the edge and I teach my students to do the very same thing. All of my acrylics and all of my encaustic work is square. Okay. 12 by 12, 36 by uh -huh. 36 inches. That's just soothing to me. It goes mm -hmm. along with the grids. It's order. <laughs> it's nice order. order. Yeah. Awesome. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for showing a little bit of the pieces. And if you want to check out more of her items, be sure that you step on into the uh, For the Love of Art Fair coming up in March. But I think Dave is actually going to take us over to another artist that's going to be showcasing their art as well. Check it out. Hey, Courtney. Thanks so much. I am here in Goshen, and I'm here with sculptor Sunday Mahaja. How you doing? I'm doing great. So that name is a Nigerian name, is that right? Yes, it is. So that's where you're from. How did you end up in Goshen? Because as an Irish guy, people always say, how did you end up living here? So now I get to ask you. Well, I got scholarship to play basketball and study at Goshen College, and that's how I got here. And how do you find it living in Goshen now? Well, it's been great because I've been here for 11 years now. Yeah. This is home for me right now. So how did you get into sculpting? Like, how is that even a talent that you figure out that you have? Well, I went to Goshen College, uh, art major, obviously. I, um, my sculptor um, mentor, who happens to be my professor at the time, uh, John Mishler, he's famous in the area, did metal sculpture. Mm -hmm. So when I came into college, I had the idea of wanting to be a painter. But towards my graduating year, I realized there was a lot of painters, and at the time, I couldn't ask myself what is something new I'm bringing to the market. And I grabbed hold of um, a welding touch with the help of John Mishler, and that was it. I realized this was something I was doing that was coming for me naturally. So that's how I got into metal sculpture. Yeah. We've actually interviewed John on the show and we've seen his work too. And what I love about yours, and I'd love for you to show me some of this work, is that you get to bring a whole uh, unique and different culture to your sculpture that you probably don't see that much around here. Right, yeah, like over here is the ballerina, but has a little of a, or a little of more of a African mm -hmm. style to it. Like you see the braided hair and mm -hmm. some of the fluidity with the style of the skirt and yeah. all that. Uh, you know, when you look at it, ballerina is mostly something that's big here, mm -hmm. not so much in Africa, but you know, when you also look at it, you can see the- The African culture. The African culture, you know, 
Yeah, it's kind of mixing Truly, both cultures yeah. together, which is part of who you are now because, you know, you know, you probably spent, what, 18 years in Africa and 11 years here, so you've spent a lot of your life here. Yeah. So I'm really interested in this one as well. Tell me a little bit about this. So this is um, a sculpture that will be going to the Middlebury Parks. It's for the city of Middlebury. Uh, they wanted a tree trunk and my inspiration for this is bringing something where the name is called gathering place. So like a tree is where we as people go for shade and mm -hmm. for covering and the birds will house on it and animals and all that um, stuff. And so over here, I came up with this idea of these patterns. Uh, some of it is, some of it are recognizable, some of it are not. Like if you see here, butterfly, they're indigenous to this area. And all around you see dragonflies and um, snapping turtle and all that stuff. And some of the patterns here is a, a Native American pattern because mm -hmm. they were the people who occupied this area long before we got here. So I try to put all that um, inspiration all together to make this piece. No, I think it's really wonderful. So people come to see you at the Love of the Art uh, event that's happening at the Century Center. Uh, what else are they gonna be able to experience? Uh, there's gonna be a whole wide range of all um, kind of sculptures that I have produced over the years and the ones that I'm working on now, like some of the squirrel here. Mm -hmm. Squirrels are indigenous to this area. Yeah. And uh, tell us a little bit more about these and your inspiration behind this, because it looks like there's a lot going on. Um, I went to Goshen College, so the squirrel is one of our <laughs> famous symbols over there. And as you can see, this is all um, screws yeah. that are put together, and these are punch out from the RV industry in this area. We have a lot of them, so that's where we get all our recycled material. Um, the squirrel is the symbol of the town here basically is <laughs> everywhere you look you find a squirrel like you could tell i work primarily with recycled material um, try to give a new life to old discarded metal and yeah there's going to be a lot to see so I think that's one of the most beautiful things about sculpture is that so much of it is reinventing uh, like pieces of cars or you know metal that you probably find on the side of the road driving around and then you get to give it a new life which is kind of amazing. Yeah. I love that. Well I think it's really great that you're doing that. If people can't come to that event at the Century Center, how can they actually find you online because I'm sure you're on social media and things yes, like that. Yes, I have a Mahaja, the name is Mahaja Arts. Um, is that M A H A J A? -A, -A okay. Yeah, and art. I'm on Instagram and I'm Facebook. I also have a um, website nice. that I could be easily found um, reached as well. All right. Well, Sunday, thank you so much. I hope lots of people come along. Uh, again, there's not a lot of sculptors in the area, and I bet there's definitely not a lot from Nigeria. So I think the flair and the difference that you're bringing to it and your skill uh, is really wonderful. So I hope people go and see it. Yeah, I'm very grateful you guys could make it out here to see my studio. We're here at the Potawatomi Zoo, one place that you will be able to visit once the spring opening happens. And Josh is with us, the executive director here at Potawatomi Zoo. This is the giraffes. I know. They're here. I, I'm so excited for this. I mean, we are standing in this 10,000 square foot facility, and it is just, it's unbelievable that we have this here at Potawatomi Zoo in South Bend. I mean, we got this uh, communal stall where, where the public, we're on the backside where the keepers are. Uh -huh. Public's going to be able to come in here and feed the giraffes. But yeah, we've got four boys here. We've got Seymour, Wyatt, and Max. And then little Kellen, he's only two years old. Um, he's in, standing over there with them. Um, and we've just been acclimating them this winter. This is exactly what we wanted to do, was get them in before yeah. the winter, get, have them start getting used to the keepers. And it takes and, a process, right? I mean, there, there's a time window where they really just need to adjust to their new surroundings. They've come from other places yeah, across the United States. Just like you would your cat or dog. I mean, they're not a, I mean, they're not a domesticated animal, but they are, even though they're very large, they're very much like a gazelle. So they're very, that they have that flight instinct. So, you know, all new things, new lights, new bar and it's it's taken them a little bit but they're already eating out of the keepers hands they're uh so they're 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 really getting uh acclimated really well so that's awesome and now when will they be able to see by the public or when can the public come visit well them? so we're hoping we're kind of playing it by ear like i said okay. there's still a little bit we're going to hopefully see them in some of the winter days before we open but definitely when we open the zoo in april um, that's going to be our goal is that everyone's going to start to be able to see the giraffe so yeah. i can't promise that we are going to have a feeding experience but like i said they are getting used to the public so it may still take a, a little time but 
we'll actually probably need to be using the public as some help to actually start kind of conditioning them to come <laughs> over and start eating. So, so you are the zoo trainer now, so <laughs> exactly. we need your help to do that. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. And there's so many animals here throughout the zoo. Uh, what is so specific, or, you know, what draws people to the giraffe specifically? You know what, at the zoo's under this revitalization period. I mean, if you, it's not the zoo that you remember as a kid. And I think that every time we hear about people wanting to go to like what they call a zoo, they want to feed giraffes, they want to see giraffes. We hear it all the time. I think now having giraffes at this zoo is truly going to make us a regional destination. We've got the giraffes, we've got rhino. Um, we're working on a bear exhibit, um, so a lot of people don't know oh that. My gosh. Um, so we're pretty much going to have anything that you want to see at a zoo. Um, so we're really excited. I mean, it, we've already seen a huge increase in attendance, and it's, it's just going to it, it's just going to take the zoo to another level. Absolutely, there's so much to experience here at the zoo. And, and now for this season, is there any other new changes that you're planning that you can maybe give us a sneak peek on? Well, so we're working on a new lion habitat. Um, so unfortunately, we did uh, we lost our last lion. It's been so quiet around the zoo lately. So we want to get lions back at the zoo. Um, but being a modern zoo, we got to get away from the square cages. So we, we're building a brand new modern lion habitat. Um, so we're hoping to have that down by, by summer. We're building a new howler monkey exhibit. So uh, those howler monkeys, we haven't had them on exhibit for a couple years now and people have been missing them. So we're going to yeah. get them out. Um, and then there's just going to be some small upgrades around the zoo, but really it's going to be focused on just getting these giraffes out, getting them acclimating, getting people over here to start feeding them. So. And there's so much experience too. And I love how you're including, you know, kind of the, the, the experience for the individual people to actually, you know, actually helping feed the animals Absolutely. and things like that too. Even some of the rhinoceros experience that you have, those individual VIP experiences, you guys are going to do that again this year? We are, yeah. Yeah, we find, you know, zoos are getting, it's harder and harder for zoos to legitimize what we're doing as a true conservation. And we find that when people can come behind the scenes and they can meet the animals and actually learn what keepers are doing and how the yeah. zoos are caring for them, it really changes people's perspective on what zoos are. Um, so it's really important to us that we do that experience so that people can see what, what, what a zoo really does. Absolutely. So. Any other tricks you want to tell us about the giraffes? I'm so excited. Um, you know, I've been, I've been trying to come in here every night. There's, like I said, they're eating out of the keeper's hands. When I come in here, they get a little uh, nervous around me. Um, <laughs> I know as soon as we walked in, they were like, nope. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to not take little. it personal. Um, <laughs> I, but you know what? It's, uh, but they're getting better and better every night. So, um, so yeah, they're, uh, they definitely have different personalities. You can tell. And you can really see that in the yeah. giraffes Kellen's too. The, Kellen, the young one, he's the most friendliest. He'll come up to and okay. you can definitely see the, the personality changes. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thanks for showing us. And of course, people can come to the winter days. We'll still have plenty of opportunities for that or a few opportunities left for that. You can get all that information on your website. Yep, absolutely. And we'll, uh, like I said, just eat, we'll play each winter day by ear if we can get you inside this draft barn. Right. We just don't have a set of date yet. But yeah, all right. Check all that out. That sounds good. Thanks, Josh. You know my favorite thing about this show? You cannot say there's nothing going on in South Bend or around Michiana. There's always something going on and we highlight them here every week. If you know about something and you think we don't know about it or we need to know about it, then you can always go to experiencemichiana.org. You can use the hashtag experiencemichiana on your post as well and we'll find them and we'll come and highlight your community events. That's what we're all about. So thank you so much for watching Experience Michiana. Until the next time, we'll see you then. Experience Michiana is made possible in part by the Community Foundation of St. Joseph County and the Indiana Arts Commission, which receives support from the State of Indiana and the National Endowment for the Arts. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.